opportunity. In fact, the Sixth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals specifically said, and I'm quoting, additional fact-finding may illuminate whether the orders were indeed appropriate under the circumstances of this case. Uh, Mr. Ambrose can do a much be better job than me of explaining why we think uh, those modifications were certainly uh, necessary and appropriate, uh, and the audit definitely speaks to that uh, issue. Thank you. Mr. President, Council Members, the court ruling is a significant setback for the City of Flint as it works to regain long-term financial solvency. As we know, the City has been in state receivership this for the second time since December of 2011. At the end of FY12, the City faced a $19 million deficit in its general fund and had minimal cash flow. According to a recent study from Michigan State University, it was also a city with one of the highest amounts of unfunded pension and health care costs per capita, nearly $11,000 per resident as of 2011. Reducing the deficit and restoring a balanced budget has been extremely difficult, and its results by, by no definition are fair to anybody, to taxpayers, employees, or retirees, those receiving city services. You will recall that the process of balancing the FY13 budget started with a projected $25 million gap between revenues and expenses. And even that preliminary estimate turned out to be smaller than what actually had to be done. Returning the city to financial solvency cannot be achieved without reducing expenses, increasing revenues, or doing some of both. The process of balancing the FY13 budget affected residents and other taxpayers, employees and retirees, plus the visitors and the students who are affected by city services. Residents saw a 25% increase in their water and sewer rates, a six mil increase in property taxes, a new assessment for street lighting, and increases in fees while seeing city services reduced. Employees saw a 20% reduction in the workforce, including more than 80 layoffs, and also saw a 20% reduction in compensation costs. Retiree health care and a new pension structure was impl were implemented for new employees. And retirees also saw a change in their health care benefits as they were moved into the same health care plans as active employees, if pre-65, pre and into Medicare Advantage plans if they were on Medicare. The major changes included a $1,000 deductible for single subscribers and a 20% co-insurance. Depending on the choice of plans, some retirees could also be, would also be subject to a $61 per month premium share. These changes for some 1,900 retirees was projected to save about $3.5 million annually. Residents, businesses, visitors, and students also, also continue to see the impact of a city government that's barely able to provide basic services. Police and fire staffing are minimal, as evidenced by long wait times for police response. Road maintenance and support is minimal and slow, as most recently, as most recently apparent in the recent winter weather. Parks are vacant. Our 63 parks are vacant and unused with very infrequent mowing. But the city was making progress. The FY13 budget was balanced and ended the year in a favorable position. But a $13 million deficit still remains. The FY14 budget was cautiously on target, with expenses not, expect not, exceeded, not expected to exceed revenues at year's end. And the FY14 budget included an anticipation of further reducing the deficit by at least another million dollars. Reinstituting the historical levels of health care for retirees could potentially add more than $400,000 per month, or nearly $5 million annually, to city expenses. Reimbursing retirees for their expenses back to the date of the court's ruling will require budgeting additional funds in the FY14 budget, and it certainly will impact the preparation of the FY15 budget. Additionally, and very significantly, the city's unfunded costs for retiree health care will rise to near previous levels. The city's action as part of the FY13 budget development to restructure health care for active employees and retirees reduced its unfunded liability of nearly $900 million 
to less than $350 million. Reversing this action for retirees is likely to increase the lowered amount by several hundred million dollars. With property values still stagnant and major grant sources uncertain, revenue and expense projections for the city of Flint show a continuing structural deficit of several million dollars annually. In other words, the amount of revenues anticipated to, to be received each year is projected to be several million dollars less than the expenses necessary to even continue the current minimal level of services. So the lawsuit ultimately be decided in the plaintiff's favor, the projected structural deficit rose significantly, wiping out most of the progress made to date in restoring the city of Flint to long-term solvency. Without the ability to contain one of the biggest cost elements in the city government, that's retiree health care, it will become necessary to consider all of the options that may be available uh, to the city and to the emergency manager under PA 436, and that may include bankruptcy. And as we know from experiences in other tr troubled municipalities, the option of bankruptcy may have far-reaching consequences, not only for providing retiree health care, but for pensions as well. Thank you. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Early's not through with his. No, but Mr. President, if I may. I'll call on you after the special order is over. I'm going to call on council members after the special order is over. Is this another subject matter, Mr. President? Uh, Mr. Early has the floor for a special order. When he's through, I will call on council members, Mr. Mays. I'm not going to appeal the decision of the chair, but I'm just, I, when <laughs> we are the council. And if I need to, under Robert's rules, if you talk to me like that, I'll appeal the decision of the chair. It's a relevant question that I have. And I'm not preventing you from asking that question, Mr. Yes, Mays. you I'm are. Only, I'm only stating that there's a special order. Mr. President, may I have the floor? No. Okay, I appeal the decision of the chair under Robert's rules. It's fine. Go ahead. You know how that worked, don't you? The vice president will take the floor, take the chair, and me and you will debate whether you're right or wrong. Well, it only if you get support from the council. No, it's not only if I get support. If you got a city attorney there, if you don't agree with me, and I appeal the decision of the chair under Robert's rules, it's a procedure for that. Me and you will debate the issue, and then the other, the vice chair, chairs the meeting. I mean, if you want to take it there, I should have told you I had something that I want to talk about. And I just said, Mr. Okay, so I appeal the decision of the chair. Okay. Do you need the city attorney to tell you what that means? Mr. Attorney? There's an existing emergency manager order that directs that you only speak when recognized by the council president, so we don't need to refer to Robert's rules. We refer to the emergency Well, that's manager. who recognized me, the chair. So I'm appealing the decision of the chair, and I think through you, Mr. President, to the city attorney, his question was not about the emergency manager order, but simply the procedure for appealing the decision of the chair. The law provides under Public Act 436 that the emergency manager can issue a directive in order to this council, which he has done. In that order, he specifically vests in the council president the ability to conduct these meetings in an efficient manner, including recognizing a member of council to speak you. And he has not recognized you, you to speak, and therefore you are not permitted to speak. So and under Robert's rule, you don't have to be recognized for certain orders. Do you know that, Mr. City Attorney? If certain things like point of order, um, point of um, information, and appeal of the decision of the chair, you might better check your Robert's rules book. I was the parliamentarian for UAW Local 699. You can laugh if you want, but the UAW taught me well. Rob, did the UAW teach you that Robert's Rules doesn't supersede Public Act 436 state law? No, I, um, the state law tells me that we are acting under Robert's Rules and the council rules. The, what, what, what I know about this meeting is that the rules has not been suspended by an emergency executive order. Now, if Mr. Early want to write one suspending the charter and the rules, then he can do it now. But right now, I know Public Act 436, and there's no executive order that suspends the rules. Now, he can write one, but remember, I took you to court. So are you telling me 
that we can suspend the rules in the charter without an executive order? Are you telling this public body that? I'm not going to debate with you. Okay, you don't have to debate. All you should do is deal with Robert's rules. I'm appealing the decision of the chair, or Mr. Kincaid could simply let me know why we're discussing pending litigation in the public. We usually do that in an executive session, and that was my original question. I've never seen in 30 years, whether it's an emergency manager, a city attorney, or a financial officer, Mr. Kincaid, and then I'll let the meeting go. When there's a pending litigation, we usually go in the executive session, and I was just wanting to know why was this Court of Appeals case under 436 different from any other litigation that I've seen that's pending. We should have been in executive session when we heard Mr. Ambrose and or the city attorney. That was my question. So y'all proceed like you want. You can arrest me if you want, but I know law. God bless you. Mr. Early. Mr. Early, you can continue. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President and to members of the council. What you heard from both the city attorney and the finance director is not so much a discussion of the uh, litigation, but you heard what the impact of the decision uh, will mean to our going forward. Our going forward, as you know, has been my attempt to further engage the council in an active role working towards a possible transition as provided in Public Act 436. Well, there are certain things that are germane to what the court decided that, in my opinion, cast a serious pall over that direction. The one thing, obviously, is the financial implications. A $12 million budget deficit going forward 